The content browser inside of Unreal Editor is an extremely powerful tool. You'll probably be using this about 75% to 80% of the time when working on Unreal Ed. So it's really important that we get familiar with it, understand it, and really understand the role it plays in our game development. So the content browser you'll find down here in the lower left, and I'm going to go ahead and grab the tab here and tear it off. So now that we have the content browser in its own window, let me show you a little bit more about how this works. So let's get familiar with the UI, what its purpose is, what it does, and all that good stuff. So the content browser is used to manage and organize your assets, but it's also used to create new assets, it's used to organize things, it's used for a lot of different things, and it also helps you in creation of your level and environments inside of Unreal Ed. So let's see how this works. Let's look at adding assets. So the first thing you'll probably see is a bunch of folders on over here on the right. And on the left, we have ourselves this sort of hierarchy view that has all these different folders. So this is how we can navigate. And basically, everything that's nested under this game category are all the assets that are currently located in our game. And I presently have the uh, Epic Games Shooter Game Example project loaded up. So that's where all these folders come from. So we have a folder for, say, animations, blueprints, effects, environment, etc., etc. When you create a new project, it'll be up to you to decide how you name your folders and how you're going to go ahead and organize them. So if I double-click this environment folder, it'll expand, and you can see that in the environment folder we have the materials, meshes, physical materials, and textures folder, which are these folders that are over here. So this is basically showing you the same thing. Now. If we go down to the view options, what we can do is, you'll notice that the show folders flag is turned on. If we uncheck that, we'll just go ahead and see whatever's located inside of the folder we have selected over here on the left, instead of seeing folders. Personally, I prefer to work this way, because this way I can just click on a folder and immediately see what's inside. But I'm going to go ahead for the sake of this tutorial and reset the view back to a folder view. So let's look at adding assets. Adding assets is actually pretty easy. I'm going to go ahead and add an asset right here in the environment folder. So adding an asset is as simple as this. Right click, you'll get a context uh, menu, and from here you can create different types of assets. We can import an asset, and we'll talk about that in another video. We can create a new folder in case you want to start organizing things a little bit better. So I can go to new folder. I can rename this new folder. And now I have myself a new folder. If I double click it, I can see it's empty and I can start placing objects here. So let's create something. I'm going to right click and in this menu I can choose to create a new blueprint, new material, new particle system. I can also create tons of other assets, so animation assets, materials and textures, sounds, etc, etc. Let's go ahead and create a material asset. So I'll click on material. I can rename this if I want. I'm going to leave the default name. When you create a new asset or when you edit a current asset that already exists, you're going to notice this little asterisk icon in the bottom left of the thumbnail. That basically means that the asset has changed or is brand new and hasn't been saved yet. So it's very important to constantly save these uh, asset packages just to make sure that, um, that your work is saved and you don't lose it. Okay, so that's how you add an asset. To delete an asset is really simple. Just right click on the asset that you want to delete and go to the context menu and hit delete. And it will go ahead and delete it. Now sometimes when you try to delete an asset, Unreal will give you an error message and say that it can't because the asset is referencing other assets. So what does that basically mean? Well what it means is that if I go over here to my meshes folder and I look at one of these meshes, say for example. I'm going to look at this guy here. I'm just picking one at random. I'm going to right click on it and in the context menu you're going to notice down here that we have a reference viewer. So I'm going to click on that and that's going to open up the reference viewer. Basically what this does is it shows me what assets are being referenced by this asset. So this object right now if I use the right mouse button I can pan back and forth the mouse wheel will, if you scroll the mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out. 
You can see that this asset currently right now exists in a map that's called Sanctuary. If I keep going to the right, I can see that here's the asset. It's a mesh. It's called FFA Block Vista 01. And if I keep going to the right, I can see that it's being referenced in code. And I can see here that there's a material that's being referenced by this object. And most likely, this is the material that's applied to the object, and it's called MFFA Concrete Wall Plate Number 1. So if you try to delete something, say for example, um, a material, sometimes you might want to delete a material and there might be an asset inside of your level that's referencing it, like say for example a material for uh, a tank or something like that. Sometimes Unreal will give you an error message and say, hey, you can't delete this because that material is being referenced by the tank. You'd have to then go track down the reference and fix it usually by removing the material, in this case, from a tank. And that way you can delete the material without a problem. Okay, so that's the reference viewer. Let's go ahead and look at some other things here. Uh, we have some asset actions. So for example, if we click on one of these assets, right click, these are our asset actions down here. We can find an asset tree, we can look at details of this object, you can create a copy, you can rename it, delete it, you can export it and migrate it. If you need to take this asset or any group of assets, you can migrate them to another project. So for example, if I want to take my entire environment folder, I can right click it, click on migrate, and basically everything that's in that folder, all of the materials, all the meshes, all the textures, everything, all of the assets are going to go ahead and get migrated to another project. In this case, I'm just going to hit cancel. So let's look at drag and drop creation. Drag and drop creation is pretty cool because what it basically means is if I go to my meshes here and let's say I want to grab uh, these meshes are probably going to be a little bit too big. Let me just go to the environment folder. I'm going to go over here and turn off the show folders in the view options. This is why I like to have the folder mode turned off. Um, let's go ahead and grab, say for example, one of these barrier pieces. All I need to do is select it, drag and drop it right into my scene. Now the object is added into my level, as you can see. So the content browser is pretty useful for tons of stuff, not just organizing all your assets, but it also works for um, basically editing your level by dragging and dropping different assets into your level and things like that, which is pretty cool. So let's look at um, real-time rendered thumbnails. So if you notice, we have these thumbnails for our different objects. You'll see thumbnails for textures. There'll also be thumbnails for materials and thumbnails for static meshes. And in case you haven't noticed yet, all of these different assets are color-coded. So you notice that static meshes are denoted by this cyan color that borders the thumbnail. Textures are denoted by this red color that surrounds the thumbnail. And materials will have this green color. So different colors mean different uh, types of assets. And that's a way to very quickly and easily just with your eyes scan all these objects and already immediately know these guys are static meshes, this guy's a material, these guys down here are textures because they're red, etc, etc. So let's talk a little bit about how to navigate this UI right here. So if you use the middle mouse uh, scroll wheel, you can actually scroll up and down just like a web page. One thing I like to do is if I click with the right mouse button and drag, I can just grab these guys and just pull them down or pull them up. And that's kind of a cool way to go ahead and navigate this uh, with a little bit more control. Another thing I can do is I can zoom into these little thumbnails. So by default right now I have them set to about this sort of a small size. If I hold down the control key on the keyboard and use the, the, uh, the mouse scroll wheel, I can zoom in on these guys and make them pretty big. So if you want to see really big thumbnail previews, you can do that. If, you want, if you'd rather see a whole bunch 
at the same time you can zoom all the way out and now I can see uh, a whole bunch of these at the same time. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in for the purposes of this tutorial and I'm going to show you something else that's pretty neat. If you notice Unreal creates these automatic thumbnails out of these different assets. So let's look at this asset over here, the uh, ball underscore R. So we can actually edit these thumbnails. Let me show you how to do that. If we go down to the view options, we'll get this menu. And what you can do here is you can go into thumbnail edit mode. And also another thing to keep in mind is real time thumbnails. If that's checked on, which it is for me, you'll get real-time thumbnails inside of uh, the content browser. So I like to have that on. I'm going to go to thumbnail edit mode and turn that on. And now you notice that we get this message down here. It says editing thumbnails. Drag a thumbnail to rotate it. So if we go to static meshes, and this works really well with static meshes, if we go ahead and left click and drag, we can actually rotate interactively inside of the thumbnail, which is really cool. So if we wanted to say make the thumbnail this view of the object because it's better then what I can do is I can do that and then click on done editing and now every time I look at this object in the content browser the thumbnail will show the view that I wanted to see which is really really cool it's an awesome feature finally I want to talk a little bit about organization before I end this video um, a great way of organizing this and being able to see things a little bit better and let me zoom out is to use filters we have a filters button up here and from here we can set different types of filters so for example let me go back to my folders view so I'm gonna hit show folders and I'm gonna make sure I'm in the environment folder now the environment folder right now contains materials meshes textures all kinds of different things Say for example, I only want to see static meshes. What I can do is I can go to filters and then click on static mesh. And when I do that, I'm going to automatically see anything that's a static mesh. So if I scroll down, you'll notice I don't see any textures or materials, anything like that. When working on game projects, it's actually pretty common to have a folder here in the content browser that's full of literally hundreds and even thousands of assets and these assets are a combination of static meshes, particle systems, textures, materials, animations, sound files, all kinds of stuff. So being able to use these filters to quickly view things like say textures or anything like that is extremely useful. If you want to get rid of one of these filters just right click on the filter itself and just hit remove. You can also remove all filters at the same time so sometimes when working you might have uh, 10 different filters. So I'll remove the static mesh filter. Now there's only a texture filter and you'll notice we have all of these red items. It's just textures that we're viewing right now. So this is a great way to organize yourself and really um, work with the content browser as fast and as easily as possible. And then the last thing I want to demonstrate is drag and drop functionality for organizing all this stuff. So for example, Say I wanted to take this meshes folder and I don't want it to be in the environment folder. Say for, for whatever reason I want to put it inside of the maps folder, which currently right now we don't have anything. So let me go back to environment. I'm going to grab this meshes folder. I'm just going to left click, grab it, and drag it and drop it on top of the maps folder. When I do that, Unreal is going to pop up this little menu with two items. And we have two options. Unreal wants to know, do we want to copy this entire meshes folder to the new maps folder, or do we want to move it? Okay, so this really depends on what you need to do. If I want to create an entire copy of everything in there, you want to hit copy. In this case, there's a lot of items inside the meshes folder, so I'm not going to hit copy. Instead, I'll just move it. So it's going to go ahead and work and move all that stuff. It's a lot of assets to move. It's going to relink and re-reference everything and move it to the new folder. And now we can see that the meshes folder is nested inside of the maps folder. So it's very easy to move things around. You can also move individual assets um, as well as folders, so keep that in mind. We can also create collections. So a collection is basically a group of assets that you want to group together just for easy access later. So let me just show you. 
If I go over here and click on this Add Collection button, I can then select Local Collection. That's going to create a new collection. I'm going to rename it. I'm going to call this um, Military Base. So say, for example, I'm creating a level that has a military base theme. Sometimes when working in one of these folders and you have lots and lots of assets, one common problem is that you have so many assets, it's very easy to end up getting lost in all these assets. So you can see there's textures and materials and static meshes and all kinds of stuff. So doing um, going in here can be a little bit daunting when you have a huge project. Collections make things easier because I can go to a folder, for example, and say, well, I like the way this guy looks. This one, this one, this one, maybe this one. So I'll select a few of these, say this piece, this piece, and this piece. These pieces are great for military base type levels. So what I can do is I can take these items, drag and drop them on top of this new collection, and that's it. It tells me that I added seven assets. So now if I click on military base, you'll notice that I have all these different assets in here. So what you can do is if you have a really big game project with tons of different levels, say you have a level that is themed, uh, has a, uh, a moon base space station sort of theme, you can make a collection of assets that are perfect for using for a sci-fi sort of space station and then put them in that collection. And then you can just quickly go to the collection, see those items, and just start dragging and dropping those into your moon base level. And it's a very fast and very intelligent way of working faster and more efficiently. So that's pretty much going to do it for the content browser. Um, I encourage you to go in there, start using it, get used to it. Content browser is extremely useful and you will be using it uh, most of the time while working inside of Unreal.